Hi, it's Corrine. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I wanted to share with you a recipe album that I made. I have added a bunch of new recipes, so I wanted to make myself a whole new recipe. And I happened to be on Etsy one day and came across this gorgeous recipe book from an online Etsy seller. Her store is Autumn Josie Design, and I will be sure to link that down in the description box. I loved this beautiful imagery that she had, and I did change up mine a little bit, so I'll show you how I did that. I do have a little bit of a start to finish, and I'll explain more through the video. But um, I went ahead and picked this up from her store, and I absolutely love this design. So here's, let me show you how it comes. So here's how it comes. It'll automatically de default to eight and a half by 11, but you can of course choose to make whatever size that you want. And look at this beautiful imagery. I absolutely just fell in love with it as soon as I saw it. Here is for the front of your book. I did change mine to put my last name on it. And I show you, I did that in my Silhouette Studio, uh, my Cameo. And I do have a tutorial at the end of this video showing exactly how I kind of changed it. She also gives you this is for like the, um, if you're going to make a binder for the outside of your binder. So when it's sitting on a shelf, it has a label. And then there's a couple different recipes that are included. These smaller recipes, um, there's also directions. And then I like the larger recipe. Again, this is what it's defaulted as. I made mine six and a half by eight. And here's, I have quite a few extras printed out. Um, this way I can automatically add them to my book. This is just bound with my cinch so I can easily unbind it and add more pages if I need to. But I gave myself a lot of room in this so I don't foresee that that I need that for a while. But I do have extras in case I want to go ahead and do that. Some other options for you if you're worried about this getting damaged or ruined. I'm not worried about it because of just how my kitchen is set up. I did use pigment ink printer so it's not... It is pretty water resistant, but you can laminate your front covers if you want. Another option, you can spray it with like a, a finish, either a matte finish or a glossy finish, and that'll just kind of put a covering over it. Or you can buy some sort of binder and put this in a binder. Again, I wanted mine just like this. I don't have to worry about it. I did use chipboard for the front and back cover. Again, I do kind of go through some of this. I'm using Felicity Jane's Alexis collection for the front and back cover. I was going to do it white, but I decided to go ahead and um, add some color to it. This is again from the same collection. I used a piece of glitter cardstock and then I used the pattern paper from inside the pattern. I show how to do that in my tutorial that's coming up. And then I use this gorgeous imagery from the online Etsy seller. So to the front, I just did a striped paper. And here are, she also has recipe index cards that come with them. Again, I'll link everything down in the description box. And I just simply printed them out back to back. I added some index cards, uh, some bracket edged index cards. I show how I do that um, just by using a pre-cut um, silhouette cut in my silhouette. And then it has sauces and beverages. I still need to fill all of this out. For the back pieces of my, these are my index pages. So for the back pieces, I just used matching cardstock that I had in my stash. And again, this is the beautiful imagery. I did add a border to this. So they come like this. They come like this. You size them to whatever size that you want. I cut mine down, as you can see, I made them smaller. I cut this piece out. I added a border that matched the exact color in the image, which again, I show how to do that. I did all of that in my Silhouette Studio. You can make this as simple as you want and just print them out and make a recipe book. Um, here she has a conversion in equivalence. I love this. I love the color scheme in this. And then I have all my different tabs. I have some of the smaller ones. And then I have soups and salads. Again, all of this comes in with her collection. 
spreads and rolls. As soon as I saw this, I was like I said, I was just kind of scrolling Etsy. I knew I had to have this, so I picked this up from her Etsy shop. Spreads and rolls, like I mentioned. I still have to fill it out. I did fill out some of it um, just with a pen. And then we have desserts. And I chose all the different background colors, again, using her imagery. Here is sauces and beverages. And then the last one we have is other. So super cute. I hope you stop by and check out her Etsy store. You'll be seeing another smaller project. Um, I also picked up the, she has a four by six recipe book. So I picked that up and I thought I can make a much smaller one like this. And this would be a cute gift to give. To someone this really did not take me long stay tuned for how I kind of change things up and if you have any questions please leave me a comment check out the description box for the link to her Etsy shop thanks so much for watching have a great day okay so I already did a lot of this off camera I punched it with my cinch and I put it in order and I also glued down my index cards I glued on the pattern paper on the back to a white piece on the front, and then I glued on my um, index card with the layer of the color. So I just wanted to show you, here's what it looks like. I left one for me to do. I did two layers of them because I really wanted that dimension. And so I simply glued them together. I'm using some Beacon Fabri-Tac. Let me move this stuff out of the way. And then I glued the three layers together. You can use a tape runner if you prefer. These two are the exact same size. So technically I could have done this one in white because it's going to be covering it up. But in case you saw it from the side, I wanted to do it in the exact same color. And now this one's going to fit in that white box there. Like I showed you how I made this in my silhouette cameo. I did the large white box to um, save on ink. This way I'm not wasting ink. Glue that right in the center and with the wet adhesive it gives you a second to kind of move it around and adjust it if need be. Press that down. And then I'm going to glue that to the center of this page as well. Just eyeballing it. And all the papers that I used on the back are just um, random papers I had in my stash that I thought went well with this collection. So now I'm keeping my book in order the way I want it. I've already done the back cover. I'm going to go ahead and do the front cover. Okay, and I have my piece of chipboard here. My, I believe I did six and a half by eight, the final book. Um, I, yeah, the, the inside pages are six and a half by eight. Eight and a half, excuse me. So six and a half by eight and a half. However, I wanted my chipboard cover to be a little bit wider. That way you didn't see the edges of the page. So my chipboard piece is eight and a half by seven inches wide. And then I made my outside cover piece, which I'm using a Felicity Jane um, from the Alexis collection. I made this larger. That way I can wrap it around the chipboard. So this is eight inches wide. So it's one inch longer and one inch taller. So it's nine and a half by eight. And I'm going to add some adhesive to the bottom of this. Okay, I'm gonna remove my tape backing from my chipboard. I'm going to add some glue to the center. I like it to adhere, be adhered down very well, so I'm going to add some wet glue to the center. And I'm just going to eyeball that. 
try and get that pretty even. And I like to press down with my brayer. And now I want to cut and miter these corners. You don't want to cut all the way up to the edge of your chipboard. You want to leave a little bit of a space. Okay, so I'm actually doing this the exact same way I would do a mini album. I'm going to go ahead and fold in on these to help the crease the paper, make it a little bit easier to fold. Press down on all those. I like to do that twice. Okay, and go ahead and remove all your tape backing. Press down the long sides first. And now you want to tuck in these little edges that are sticking out so you have a nice um, perfect fold when you fold down these last two short sides. And then just lightly fold those over, press them down. Do the exact same on this side. Okay, so I like to remove just the top portion of the tape backing from the top of my paper, and then I can kind of move it around and center it exactly where I want. So I'm just going to kind of move it until I'm really happy with it. Which that looks good there. So I press that down, and now I can go ahead and release the tape backing from the rest of it. I like to add glue to the center as well. I'm not shy with my glue. I like to make sure everything is adhered down very well. Press that down and go over it with my brayer. I want to make sure that glue is really pressed down nicely. Okay, so I went and ran that through my cinch machine as well. And now to decorate the front cover, I think I'm gonna use this same Felicity Jane paper with a piece of glitter cardstock. And then here is my front piece. Yes, I love the way that looks. And I like the little bit of dimension that the cardstock gives it, or excuse me, the chipboard gives it underneath that glitter paper. So I'm gonna first adhere this down. going to try and center that as best I can. Add my glitter paper to my piece of chipboard. I'm using black chipboard that way if you see it from the side, it just kind of blends in. It won't stand out as much as the look of natural chipboard would. And I just made it slightly smaller than my glitter cardstock piece. And now I'm going to leave this piece off until after I bind my book together. 
I will add that last piece. So I'm going to go ahead and bind this with my cinch. Um, I'm sorry I'm not doing a tutorial on that today, but there are lots of tutorials out there of how to use the cinch if you're not familiar with that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just bound my book. Now here is my cookbook. Super, super cute. So let me add my front piece to it. And I'm using one and a quarter binding rings because I have a large book here. And I'm going to go ahead and add a bow to the center of this, matching the same paper collection. I'm going to go ahead and add a silver bling to the center instead. And this is sticky back, however, I'm going to add a little bit of fabric beacon tack as well. Okay, so the very first thing that you want to do is go to your download file. You're going to have to unzip the file that you receive and simply drag it into your silhouette. Now I'm using Silhouette Designer Edition, so this may be a little bit different depending on which version that you're using. Um, I've only always used the Designer Edition, so unfortunately I don't know much about the other editions, but if you're using um, the basic, this should be very similar. So it's gonna ask me if I want to import as a vector or import as an image. I'm going to select import as an image, and get the highest resolution the DPI is 1200 and I'm going to select support it will take a minute to um, bring it into your silhouette studio if you're simply printing this out you don't need to bring it into your silhouette studio you can simply print it out I'm just showing you how I was able to do it with mine so it's gonna take a minute here to kind of catch up I'm going to maximize my screen here and now this is what it brings in. Let me zoom in. So here is the eight and a half by 11 version. You can simply, like I said, print that out. What I did is I just grabbed it and sized it to the size that I want. I believe I did, yeah, I did a six and a half by eight and a half. So you could just size it, select up here width and size and change it to what you want. Now to show you what I did for the center, let me work over here because I think it's a little bit easier to see. So I wanted um, to cut out this center piece as I showed you. I simply went over here to the left, grabbed a rectangle, and dragged my rectangle to the size that I wanted. If you select both of them and come up here to the center at the top, it'll center your rectangle perfectly for that. So what Again, what I did for mine is I cut this size out because I wanted to layer it. I wanted there to be dimension on the page. So just grab both of them, come over here to the right, open up your modify panel, and simply select crop. And now it's gonna crop everything out except what you had that right rectangle around. So the next thing, let me come up here and duplicate this. Okay, so now I have two of them that are the exact same. Let me go ahead and come up here and fill it with nothing. So I'm gonna fill nothing. But let me turn on the um, cut line so you can see it. I wanna fill this box in with a color from this image. So if I zoom way in for you, come up back up here and select my eyedropper tool. Okay, so I'm gonna select that. And now I can zoom way in and select whatever color that I want. 
So if I want that beautiful green or I want this turquoise color, let me come into that. And now I have that turquoise color. So again, let me bring this to the front. I right clicked on it and select bring to the front. If I grab both of them and come up here, it'll center them for me. Being that they're the exact same size, it's it's going to cover that up. So you want to make this a little bit larger. There's two ways of doing it. Just grab one of the corner boxes and drag it out to, to the size that you want. Or by selecting this, you can come over here to your offset panel on the right and select offset. You want to select corner because I don't I want the sharp corners. I don't want them rounded. And then you can make the size, the distance larger. So I'm going to bring that up, select apply. Okay. And now let me fill that in with that same color. If you come back up here, it's going to keep the same color or I could have used my eyedropper tool again. So let me just select that color, move this out of the way so you can see it. And now you have a perfect um, match to your image. The other thing I want to tell you how I did mine is you can, you can print it out just like this. You can print and cut it just like this. I like to have the layers. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So I'm going to duplicate this box because I want a box just like it. I'm going to fill it with white because I don't want to waste all this ink when I'm covering it up with this image piece. Now I'm simply going to make this white box a little bit smaller, grab both of them, come up here and center it. And now selecting just the white box, you want to go to your send panel up here at the top right and select no cuts. I'm going to grab my turquoise box and select cut. Now let me let me bring them back into the screen so you can see it a little bit better. Move all this out of the way. And now if I go back to my send, you'll be able to see it's going to cut just the outside, not the inside. The next thing I'd like to show you is how I changed the image on the front to have my last name as opposed to it saying family favorite recipes. So let me put that right in the center here and zoom in. Okay, so I simply, again, grabbed the rectangle here. I put a rectangle right up around that writing. You don't want to cover up any of the image. You want it just to go around the writing. Let me grab, I keep moving the wrong thing out of the way. Now I want to fill this in with white. And also before I do that, I'm going to, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go back up to the send window and I'm going to select no cut. You're going to see that red line box cut gone. Now I can select cut so it'll cut the outside of it. So coming back, let me select this inside rectangle again. And now up here at the top left, I want to fill it with white. Now it will, it will cover that up. I'm going to go over here to my text window, my text box, select that and type out my last name. And then I put recipes at the bottom. Go ahead and highlight all of those. Come over here to your right, to your text panel, and go ahead and center that. You can adjust your character spacing however you want to do it. I believe I did adjust the line spacing. I wanted it a little closer together. Let me bring this over here. And now double click on it and change your fonts. For this one, I used ZP West Coast Swing. And then for the top one, I used Gabe Lisa. Really pretty font. It is a cursive font. Let me zoom in a little. It's a cursive font, so I did weld it. So click off of it, grab it again, right click and select weld. And now I can group it together because I don't want it to move without, um, actually let me ungroup it. Let me ungroup it. I'm gonna group just my last name first. So right click, select group. I'm gonna group the word recipes by right clicking. And now again, I wanna fill this in, come up to my eyedropper tool and I can use the same last color that was there. Grab all of it and do the same thing. It didn't grab the top there. And then same thing with recipes. I want to 
choose a different color. I can use my eyedropper tool and say I want to use this orange. Let me zoom way in on the orange so I can easily grab it. Sometimes you have to reselect your eyedropper tool. And then I'm going to go right in the middle of that orange and select that. Let me go back to the wording. And now you can see I have the two different colors that are in the images. I'm going to group those together, bring it up here, size it accordingly. And then I would simply print this out and cut it out. Again, by hitting send, you want to select the, um, the writing and select no cut. And now you can see by the red lines, it's going to cut just your outside image. Okay, so lastly, what I wanted to share with you was how I made the tabs. So let me pull this over here. Super simple. Let me zoom way in on it. I simply used a bracket shape that I had. I typed out main dishes. So I used my text tool over here on the left. I typed out the word main dishes, chose my fonts, which I believe the font I chose was Arial. And I just kind of held this size up to my actual page and just eyeballed it to what size that I wanted. So mine is almost one and a half by almost one inches tall. And then I simply grabbed the bounding box and just again eyeballed it to the size that I wanted. I filled it in with white. Let me zoom in again. I took away the print lines just so I could see it better. And then when I got it to where I wanted, I grabbed both of them, came up here and centered it together. And then going back to my send up here, you want to select no cut. Let me bring it into the, I know, I know you can't see it with the white, but let me just show you. As you can see, it will only cut the outside bracket shape. And then I simply cut two of them out and backed them back to back so they would be finished on both sides. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Thanks so much for stopping by and I hope you have a great day. Make sure to check out the Etsy seller that I will link down in the description box.
So I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, leave me a comment.